On the surface, the Eritrean capital, Asmara, appears no different to many other African cities. But UN investigators say that is just a facade. The issues relating to Eritrea's military slash national service programs include their arbitrary and indefinite duration, the use of conscripts as forced labour, including manual labour, the inhumane conditions of service, rape and torture often associated with service and their devastating impact on family life and freedom of choice for the individuals. 25 years after gaining independence from Ethiopia, Eritrea remains a one-party state. Dissidents risk being detained, beaten and tortured. The UN report says compulsory and indefinite military conscription amounts to modern-day slavery. The UN withdrew its peacekeepers from Eritrea in 2008, complaining of the government limiting their movement. And the UN's investigators were not allowed to visit this time. Instead, they interviewed more than 800 people who have fled abroad. And there is no shortage of exiles. People like this man, who escaped from Eritrean detention in 2011 by leaping from a prison truck. The risk of death, preferable to jail. You will say, oh, one year, maybe. One year, six months, two years. After that, you don't have any hope. No life, no hope, no vision. That's why dying is, is one of the best solutions sometimes for you. Other exiles have similar experiences. Totalitarian, absolute totalitarian. So there was a reason. It's not because of uh, uh, you frightened to yourself only. It is, it is very controlling. You feel like you are in prison. The Eritrean government refutes the UN findings as laughable, saying Eritrea rejects the politically motivated and groundless accusations and the destructive recommendations of the UN report. The UN Human Rights Council is debating the Commission's report in Geneva on Tuesday. Among the options to be debated by the UN Council, a call for the International Criminal Court to become involved in pursuing the leaders of Eritrea. Paul Brennan, Al Jazeera, London.